In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to render different camera views to separate image files all automatically with one click. It's a huge time saver and a great way to show off your work. The beautiful thing about 3D art is that you can view it from any angle and it should still look good depending on what you're doing. Two dimensional art, completely different story. but. We have that third dimension, so why not show it off with multiple views of your same creation? Now in this scene, I'm going to be showcasing some Star Wars styled props that I have set into this collection right here, which will be available for sale online very, very soon. And then I've got the Tatooine city set made by my friend Danny Burns, another very awesome Star Wars themed kit bash set you can also buy online. I highly advise you get it if you love Star Wars. And I want to show off my props with close ups and some wide angle views of different angles because this is a very busy scene and even though this main camera view captures most of it. I want to have some more detailed shots to promote my kit bash. So we have our first camera here and it is the active camera. Obviously when we press zero on numpad, it goes to that camera because that's the active camera and there's only one camera in the scene. We're going to change that in just a minute. So we're going to split our view first by putting our mouse right on the corner. You see the crosshair cursor click and drag down. And on the top, I'm going to get the timeline editor, which is something I never use. I'm always in the graph editor when I do normal animations, but this is a little different than a normal animation. So let's go to frame number one. You can use your arrows in your keyboard left and right to go frame by frame, go to our output settings and let's have the frame start at one. And let's say we want to do uh, six different camera views and let's end at frame seven. So let's zoom in here by uh, adjusting our little bottom scroll bar here. We've got frames one through seven. Awesome. So here's what you do. Once you have a camera set as the main camera by pressing control numpad zero to set that as the active camera, you simply go up to your timeline, go to marker, add marker, and then marker bind camera to markers, which is control B. Okay. So we see down here camera. That's actually the name of this camera object. I can name it. Um, let's do uh wide view. There we go. So wide view is the main camera only on frame or on, on frame one and after. But if we go to frame two, let's make a new camera shift a add camera. And now I'm going to uh, get a different view. Let's see, what do I want to focus on? I want to focus on this, uh, these crates here. So I'm going to set my camera view like this. Oh, for some reason, my new camera went into this collection. Where did I go? Right there. I'm going to click that. Um, M and move it to uh, scene collection. There we go. So now let me just clean this up. There we go. So I've got my wide view camera and then my new camera I just made. I'm going to call this uh, crates. There we go. Now we know what it is. Um, and I'm with that with that camera actually selected. See down here, it's it's right here, just hanging out on the ground, looking at nothing. Okay, so we've got our camera named. Uh, this is the crates camera, but it's over here looking at nothing but the sand on the ground. That's that's not what I want. So two things I got to do real quick is I need to set this new camera, the crates camera as my active camera by pressing control numpad zero. And that automatically does put your view to that camera, which I don't want. So if I press zero again, watch this, it goes right back to that 3D view I had before. Cool. Now I want to move that camera to what I see, which is these crates and that barrel. Uh, control alt zero will do that. There we go. That sets the actual camera to your 3D view. It's usually a little bit differently framed. So I'm going to press G Z Z to uh, move out as I move my camera out. There we go. Don't let all your cameras be the default. Don't make them all 50 millimeters or 35. And um, also don't forget depth of field to add some realism. So I'm going to make this one a little bit of a close up. 85 millimeter, great portrait lens. If you're doing photography, pretty tight. There we go. Don't cut off the headroom on top of that barrel. All right. And I need to set my depth of field, of course, which we can turn on limits. And then actually I could just grab this dropper and just select that. There we go. So that is perfectly in focus no matter where the camera moves. Okay. So that's uh, going to be for frame two. So we'll go to marker, add marker, and then find camera to marker. There we go. So if I go to frame one, boom, wide view crates. Let's do another one. Uh, I'm going to get out of this camera view. Let's focus on the front of the store because I got a lot of cool stuff here. Okay. I'm just positioning my 3d view. Let's uh, shift a make a camera. And I'm going to press F2 and name it um, storefront, enter, and then control zero to make that active camera, zero to go back to my view, control alt zero. And then up here, we're going to press, let's try the keyboard shortcuts, M to make a marker, and then control B. There we go. Now you have to have the camera object selected to add it to, uh, to bind it to that marker. So you got to select the camera over here, which again, is not in the scene collection, M for move. There we go. Now it's outside these collections. So remember one is the, just the buildings from my friend. The other one is the props that I made. 
Cool, so we got our three cameras and it is bound. So create camera, storefront. Let's go to frame four. Let's focus on, we got some cool stuff right over here. This little alleyway. So shift A, make a camera. Control zero to make it the active camera. Zero to get out of it. And then to fix this boring, <laughs> this camera that's stuck in the sand to what I'm seeing, I'm going to press control all zero right there. Zoom out a little bit. Actually, I could make this in a wider angle. This would be cool. I do need to add a sky because I don't think the final render has any sky back there. Um, so let's make this a wider angle. Like 28. Nice. Get some balance. If you don't know what rule of thirds are, go learn it. It will improve your rendering and your photography if you even do any of that. Um, there we go. Cool. OK, so uh, is this the actual camera? Yes, it is, because it's great. And let's call this alley. I don't know if that's technically an alley, but it is now. Uh, and it is the active camera. So up here, press M and then Control B. There we go. Alley camera for frame four. Let's do something else. How about these little lockers? Got some add additional things added to the front of this building as well. Add some stuff up top. So let's um, add a new camera. I'm going to name it Storefront 2. Control zero to make it after camera, zero to get out of it. Control alt zero to uh, make it this view. G, Z, Z. Move it out, make it a little bit wider. Let's do a 35. Nice. Awesome. All right. Up here, M to make a marker. Control B to bind the active selected camera to that marker. One more. Let's get something up here. I've got a cool idea. I'm going to make this a really long focal length. I'm going to show you what that does. So first control, oh, let's name it um, top or roof. There we go. OK, control zero to make it active, zero to get out of it. Control alt zero to make the view to that camera. Let's make it a 200 millimeter zoom. Oh, yeah. GZZ move it back big time. This makes things look kind of miniature. Um, and if you look at uh, satellite photos from, you know, like Google Images, um, some of them have a really zoomed in view of the terrain and then things look almost isometric. And that is because the focal length on those satellites are, I don't even know how many hundreds or thousands of millimeters and it just flattens things really interesting. Um, so yeah, there we go. Just to show you what that does. I probably don't actually like this. I'm going to make it a little bit more of a natural, like be between a hundred and you know, 20, but I'll just leave it right there. Um, I didn't name this, did I? Yeah, I did. It's roof camera. Okay. Up here, M. Control B. Awesome. So as we go through frame by frame, I'm just using my arrows right here. Next, 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 next. Awesome. Cool. You can play this as an animation. If you want to get a seizure, here we go. All right, because this, this is a frame by frame animation, which is the beauty of the kind of a batch export of each camera, right? Uh, and I, I think there is a plugin for this that'll do camera renders to files. That's great. But, uh, you know, it is kind of natively in here if you just know how to work it. I'm going to make these high quality renders. So 150 percent resolution um, sample count 300. I'll do 400. Make sure denoise is turned on. I'm using K-Cycles X, by the way, which uh, just has a little bit faster render times and better denoising. Um, OK, here's the important part. Output. Where do you set the size? We need to go down, make sure frame frame uh, start and end is good. And here is where the separate images of each frame are going to go. Because uh, we're basically exporting an animation sequence, which is image frames of a video, <laughs> a video ren render, basically. It's not video files, it's image files. But I'm going to send these to my Blender renders. I'm going to call this city scene camera. Just leave it at that. Accept. Okay, so they're going to go there. That's the start of the file name. And then it's going to add numbers, I think, or frame numbers at the end. Now, file format, we're going to keep this as PNG, so it's nice and high quality. I'm going to put it at 16 bit because I think that makes it higher quality image. I'm not 100 percent on that um, there. I mean, there's more bits than color. So I guess, yeah, I don't know if it's perceptible, but there's more there. Um, no transparency. And let me see what I did with the sky. I don't know if I have an actual sky that's visible. I have an HDRI. I don't know. I think it might be cut out. Whoa, what am I doing here? Viewing mist. I don't know why I'm viewing the mist pass. There we go. Combined. Um, not very Tatooine, but we'll leave it. Let me see what the other views show. Pretty boring blue sky there. I'm just going to leave it right there for this. That's fine. And you're done. All you got to do now, uh, once you got your export stuff set up, is just hit render and it will start rendering each frame. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it will save them to a separate file. Oh, I didn't set a camera for my last view. Uh, what should I focus on? What should I focus on? 
Um, let's do this cool guy because I really like this piece. Make camera, control zero, control alt zero. Bring this down, make it a wider angle. Let's do 30. See, all my cameras are a little different from each other. And I think that is nice for it to get a good visual of what this, you know, scene really is. Oh, don't want to cut off the top of it. Awesome. And uh, we got to go up here. M, control B. Oh, before I hit render, I am going to set my depth of field for all my cameras. Here's a cool trick. You can scale cameras and it does not affect the actual camera, but make sure you are scaling them up together using individual origins. S for scale, make them really big. Now I can see what they're looking at, right? Um, and I'm going to go through each one to make sure that depth of field is turned on and make sure that it is focusing on something appropriate. So this is a wide angle scene. It's focusing right there. That's good. I'm going to go from top down alleyway. I want it to focus on, um, turn it on. Do the eyedropper. Let's focus on that bucket right there. If you turn on limits, you can see where it's stopping. Let me zoom in. There it is. That little cross area is the focus area. Next one over here. Obviously, we're going to focus on that object. So turn that on. Focus right there. Crates. We already set that one. It's focusing right on this computer interface one. Roof. Uh, this is a really long one. And I realize I am not actually changing my f-stop setting, which will control that blurriness you get in the background. But I'm just going to keep it at 2.8 and see how it turns out. It's going to it's going to wing it. Um, play with that though for different different looks. Uh, this is focusing on the storefront, so I'm going to have it focus. Uh, let's do it manual. I'm just going to oh turn on limits there so we can see it. And I wanted to focus right, right there, kind of at the entrance. Cool. One more. This guy is focusing on what? Oh, that storefront. So turn on depth of field. Let's do that crate right there. Awesome. All right. We got them all set up. Now we can hit render. All right, all done. It did not take long at all, but it's still a time saver because I didn't have to go through each one, render it, go back to it, save it. And I like to do stuff automated like that when it's a simple process. Now, each of these frames take 20, around 20 to 23 seconds each. Um, I did actually size these down to normal HD resolution and I put it down to 200 samples for the render. Um, I am using a... Uh, 2080 Ti overclocked with 64 gigs of RAM. Um, so, you know, there's that. Uh, so these scenes look pretty decent. Let's check out what it created. Here's my render folder. If I zoom in a little bit, these ones up here are are them. So we got, yeah, triple zero seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Pretty awesome. And here's another little bonus tip at the end of this video. If you want to make a collage of your renders, which is a photo of multiple photos in one, a really great and free tool to use is Photoscape. It's freeware and it's really easy to use. There's a bunch of things it can do, but I only use the page feature because it is just drag and drop fun for collages. So I'm going to set my resolution to a square 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels for no real apparent reason. Um, zoom out. Okay, and here is the folder I navigated to, my Blender Renders folder. As for some reason, this only sorts them alphabetical. Um, honestly, normally when I do this, I actually have the folder open on top right here, and I just drag and drop, but uh, you can do it within the program. But yeah, I'll usually bring up my folder over here. Where is it? The first one I'm going to put on the top right. I'm actually going to make this a little bit wider because these are all wide, you know, widescreen renders. So there's my first view right there. Got a nice one there. Some close-ups storefront awesome there we go see how easy that was you can even add border in between if you want to have a little break and you can round them off if you want rounded corners looks nice and professional again big thanks to danny burns who created this tatooine uh, styled building set with props and amazing textures thanks again for letting me use this for my renders for all the Star Wars lovers out there, go check it out. Also, go check out my various Star Wars spaceship and uh, Greeble and now prop kit bash. I'll soon be making an interior set of some famous sets from the Star Wars movies. I plan on making them fully production and render ready, and they should be beautiful and a lot of fun to play with. Well, thanks for watching this video. May the Force be with you. Well, thanks for watching this video. Hope you learned something. And of course, may the Force be with you.